All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. This is Jim Fox with Remote It. Thanks for joining us today for the webinar. I'm going to show you how to use a mobile phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot along with Remote It to access any edge network or any device on an edge network using what we call out-of-band management configuration. And I think it's a very powerful use case of Remote It. So I'm um, excited to do this one and show you guys how to, how to get this working. Here's an agenda and topics for today. You'll have a chance to see a live demo of out-of-band management using a cellular phone Wi-Fi hotspot into a uh, isolated LAN. And you'll also have a chance to ask any questions along the way. And I'll answer those at the end to keep things on track. You know, time-wise, I'll save questions for the end. To get the most out of this webinar, I think it would be ideal if you've used Remote It a little bit, if you've used the web portal or one of our native desktop apps like uh, Windows or Mac desktop and made a few connections, then you'll understand everything I'm doing here. There's really no more prerequisite knowledge than that required to understand what we're doing. We're going to show you live demo, as you said, and even, as I said, and also how to uh, set this up for yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What is out of band management? This term is actually originates from the beginnings of enterprise IT networking, out of band management. Uh, you can see here on the, on the left, original simple enterprise router switches have different ports on the back. So there are data ports where you connect the different LAN clients and the router assigns LAN IP addresses, of course. There's the WAN port where connect to the modem, to your ISP and onto the internet. But there's also a port known as the console port. And in the early days of enterprise IT networking, I believe it was Cisco and other companies like that, gave the name in-band ports to the data ports and out-of-band to the console port. Because when you first take the router out of the box and have to install it, you need a way to connect to it. So the console ports were used for that purpose, just original setup configuration of the router and any troubleshooting or maintenance work uh, in an ongoing fashion with the IT department. So console ports were normally serial or maybe UARTs or USB, not necessarily ethernet, okay? But that's where the term out of band comes from. It really referred to the console ports on original and I think even today Cisco routers uh, have a console ports that are considered out of band. But for the purposes of this demo and for remote it, we'll think of out of band management or out of band connection as a connection to a remote network that allows us to remote access it. But the connection path is separate than the data port local LAN address spaces and we're also bypassing the primary WAN gateway at the edge network. So it's basically a path in to an edge network and devices on that network that does not rely on the primary internet gateway at that site, okay? And we'll be using a phone as a hotspot. So there's really two scenarios we could talk about for when you'd wanna do this out of band management. I've diagrammed here on the left network A. This is very typical, right? You have a global IP address probably assigned by your ISP to your home or office router on the WAN side. And then that, that router offers ethernet and Wi-Fi connections to different clients. This is the very typical network configuration we all have in our homes and offices usually. That's one scenario. On the right, what I've called network B, is a situation known as an air-gapped network where there is no internet connection whatsoever. So all we have are devices, maybe these are PCs, printers, phones, whatever. These are all the various LAN clients. They do connect to a router or switch so they can communicate with each other over the LAN, but there's no path to the internet. Okay, and this, this could be done. Uh, we've had users, for example, in a hospital, ICU ward. You know, there's a lot of networked equipment in there. All those machines that monitor patients are networked, but for security and privacy reason, uh, they just don't have any connection to the internet. So that would be considered an air-gapped LAN. 
and occasionally you still need to get into that network remotely from outside if something goes wrong with one of those machines you can imagine it's really life or death to be able to get in remotely so that's what i'll be showing you so how does out of band management work or what does this really look like let's talk about the first network network a very typical ordinarily if everything's working, you can remote access that network with a traditional VPN or with remote it or however you want. But if there's some disruption in the internet service where that router isn't working properly, then you're really stuck, right? If you need to uh, access that network and diagnose what's going on or troubleshoot the router or get to one of those devices, if there's a disruption in internet service, so this is an example where out-of-band management can really help. What out-of-band management means in this scenario is that in that situation, if I have a device, and I'm showing a Raspberry Pi here, but if we have a device on this LAN with the other clients behind that router, and that device is equipped with remote it, in an out-of-band fashion, then that device can join a Wi-Fi hotspot hosted by anybody's cellular phone. And that gives us a path, even though the primary internet gateway is down. Okay, so this would be the typical scenario where out-of-band management is important. And again, the term out-of-band just means, well, we're accessing this network remotely, but we're not relying on the primary internet gateway connection because it's down we have a secondary connection to access this network. This is exactly what I'm gonna show you in the demo, but let me talk a little bit about this device. We're showing and using a Raspberry Pi, and we've done a image, a downloadable SD card image from our website, that if you download that, burn it on the SD card, and boot up a Pi in this configuration, uh, it'll just work. The Pi will join this LAN, with an ethernet, wired ethernet IP address, and it will also go off and look with its Wi-Fi interface for the cellular phone. And then if it finds it, it'll join that and take its internet connection this way, but also be a client on this LAN, okay? And I'll show you what all this looks like. Same thing in the air-gapped case, network B, no internet connection whatsoever to begin with. So the only way you're gonna get in is with this kind of configuration. Again, out of band management, same Raspberry Pi, same SD card image, connect by ethernet here. The Pi will automatically find that phone and be accessible remotely using remote it. If you use this image, we've done all the work of you know, setting up the interfaces on the Pi so that Ethernet will stay local here and Wi Fi will look for the WAN connection over here. Okay. So let's talk about how to do it, and I'll show you what it looks like too. Again, the key to making all this work, at least with a Pi, is go to our downloads page. You find this remote at Pi image. It's a you know, gigabyte standard Raspberry Pi OS distribution, latest distribution from their website with our stuff added to make this out of band management configuration work out of the box, if you will. What you'll need to do is follow this one time setup. All of this is documented nicely and the links will be in the in the chat, but we have a full 15 minute, I think, YouTube video live on our YouTube channel that shows how to set this up. Uh, there's also written instructions on our website how to set this up, but I just kind of summarized here in one slide the one time setup that's required to do this. Uh, you need to download that image off our website, burn it on an SD card. You will have to set up your phone Wi-Fi hotspot with these Wi-Fi SSID and passwords because that Pi is going to boot and look for that Wi-Fi SSID and look for that password, or rather use that password to join it. So you do have to do that. It works for Android or iOS. I've tried both. And then connect your Pi via Ethernet cable to the LAN side of that router. Power it up, and it will join the Wi-Fi network. And then 
you will need to register that PI to your remoted account and install the three default services, SSH, VNC, and the remote admin console. But after you've done all that, you're really ready to access that remote network. Again, here are some of the resources available if you wanna try this yourself. I think if you have a little experience with Pi and remote it, you could probably set this whole thing up in less than 10 minutes. So let me show you what this is gonna look like. This is a diagram of the demo setup I have here. So I've got no internet connection, right? On this, this is an air gap network demonstration. So I have no internet connection, but I do have a router. I have a Linksys router and it has on the LAN side, a few clients on it. I have a Windows PC on it and I have the Pi, the remote Pi that I uh, set up per the instructions on the previous page. And I've connected that Pi via ethernet cable to the router. And I've also got a phone here. I have an Android phone with the correct SSID and password set up so that Pi booted and joined it. So now that Pi has a path to the internet through the phone. And it's also a client on this little LAN, okay? So let me show you what that looks like through our portal. I'm gonna switch over here for a moment. I'm gonna to go to the web portal, remote at web portal and log into my account. And you'll see that I've registered this Pi and I registered the three default services, SSH, VNC and the remote at Pi admin window. And just to show you that this is all working, this is the device right here, Remote at Pi, JFox. And those are the three default services that were installed just by booting it and going through the installation instructions. Well, let's try, let's try to get to it via SSH. Let's see and I'll show you Oh, I see what I did here, sorry. I just wanna get connected to that Pi by SSH. So this is a remote connection over the cellular. And I wanna show, if I do a simple if config here, you can see that the ethernet, some of you may have, you know, be familiar with this, the ethernet has an IP address from the LAN. So it's a client on the LAN there. Localhost is running, USB interface, and the Wi-Fi has joined the hotspot, right? So it has two active ethernet connections. And this is all the setup that we've done in the downloadable image. So if I do like a trace route to Google, you'll see, <clears throat> That's the hotspot. That's my cellular, AT&T cellular natted LAN address. And then this would probably be the first IP address that it belongs to AT&T cellular. So you can see it used, it used the cellular path to get to Google uh, rather than ethernet, which doesn't have an internet connection. Let's go back here. And then I wanna show you this. This is where it really gets interesting. Connect to the Remote Pi admin console. This is just a web page running on that Pi, hosted on that Pi. It's part of the downloadable image we made. Okay, so that loaded the web page that's hosted on the Pi that gives you like an administrator kind of access to that Pi so that you can join other clients on the LAN or rather, uh, connect to other clients on the LAN. So I have to log in with my remoted account. And you're seeing over here that I'm now managing the Pi itself, okay? So let's go to settings in the bottom right there.
And these are the services that are set up on this remoted Pi. So here's the three defaults I did already, right, in advance, SSH, VNC, and this administrator portal we're looking at right now. And if I say add from network, I can tell the Pi to scan either the wired ethernet, which is what I want, or the wireless, which is the phone. So I'll, I'll select wired for the ethernet. It will scan and find all the other clients, right? So this one is the router. 1.1 is the router itself. I believe 128 is the Pi's wired ethernet interface, and this is a, the PC I have. So here's where it really gets powerful. After it scans, I can, if I wanna manage that router remotely over this out of band management configuration, I can add that. Let me give it a name. Uh, it's Linksys port 80, let's say. So what I'm basically doing is telling the Pi to provide connections to the web page of that router, relay those connections over there, and then send them back to the uh, initiator. I can also, maybe on that Windows PC, uh, this, is RD, this is RDP, Remote Desktop, 3389. So let's add that one. And I'll just give it a nicer name. We, we, we populate a default name, but this is my Acer PC. Let's say uh, RDP. Add that one. Okay. So now, just to review, if I go back here, now I have this Pi booted up and it's a client on this LAN. And I've also now installed two new services, right? I've installed, a, I can now browse the web page, the admin console web page for that router by virtue of the Pi being here. And I've also added an RDP connection to this Windows PC. So I could remote desktop that PC because the Pi is here and because I set up that service, right? So let me go back to the remote it portal. And I'll refresh. And now, lo and behold, I have two new services, right? I still have the three original VNC, SSH, and remote admin panel. But now I have the Linksys and the RDP. So let's try making a connection to the web page on the router. So there we go. Now imagine you're in a situation where the internet connection is down or there is no internet connection, as you can see, the router is telling me that, but I can still remote access this network and any device on it because I have this remote Pi there and if someone has a Wi-Fi hotspot on their phone. Well, let's see if I can get it, if I remember my password there. So this could obviously be a very powerful tool for IT people or anyone looking after a remote network if you need to get in and the primary internet connection is either down, not working, or it's air gap, there isn't one to begin with, you can still get in through this mechanism, out of band management through the Raspberry Pi. I also wanna show you I forgot to mention when we were here. <clears throat> See this indicator right here in the Remote at Pi admin webpage? When you do the network scan, this will light up blue as it is right now to indicate we're in an out of band management mode or our connection is an out of band connection. And what, that, what that's telling you 
is simply that there are two active ethernet connections on the Pi. The wired ethernet is a LAN only and the WAN or internet is coming off the Wi-Fi interface on the Pi. So that's what that means when that indicator lights up. It means your, your, your path over the internet is, uh, is not relying on the primary internet gateway. It's happening over cellular, if you will. So that's what I wanted to show you. I hope that was clear. Basically what we're doing is by downloading that image, burning it on an SD card, putting this Pi physically onto this, the LAN at the remote edge network I wanna to get to, putting it physically on the LAN via ethernet cable, then as long as I can get a phone set up as a hotspot at that location, I can access that network from anywhere. And not only can I get to the Pi, but I can get to the clients, right? I showed you getting to the web page of this router. Similarly, I could get to RDP remote desktop of any Windows machine. Anything on this LAN is now accessible remotely through this path. You know, do I need to have a Raspberry Pi to use out of band management? The answer is definitely no, you don't have to use a Pi. We've made it easy to use a Pi by setting it up where, uh, you know, the ethernet will be LAN only, the Wi-Fi will look for the hotspot and the WAN. You can use a Windows machine, you can use a Mac, you can use anything that will run uh, remote it. But the issue is you have to be able to configure that device so that its wired ethernet will be LAN only and its Wi-Fi will look for the internet. Okay, so that's, you have two active Ethernet interfaces on whatever device you use for the uh, OOPM, you know, host. And you have to be able to configure that. Uh, and we've just made it easy on the Pi. And a lot of our users are Pi users, so uh, it seems to make sense. So I hope that answers that question. So I have to go on site to make this happen, right? Yes, you would have to go on site once to obviously install the Pi, connect it to wired ethernet, but the Pi doesn't have to be on 24 seven. If you wanna have th this kind of access, you would need someone there to turn it on and someone to have a Wi-Fi hotspot with the correct SSID and password. Uh, but that's usually a lot easier than sending someone to travel there and, and uh, do all this in person. We also have a question, does it work also with iPhone? Yes, the answer is yes, of course. Any hotspot that has the right SSID and password, this Pi will automatically join. And of course you can edit the WPA supplicant file on the Pi to change the SSID or password it's looking for on Wi-Fi, but we just made it easy. You know, we have default settings you can replicate on the phone. So iPhone, Android, I've tried them both. They both work fine. There's a question as to whether or not this uses the remote mobile app, the iOS or Android mobile app. Uh, you don't need to use the mobile app on the Wi-Fi hotspot phone at all. The mobile app is more for initiating connections. So you could certainly use the mobile app as the administrator offsite and you want to get into this network to initiate your connection, but the mobile app is not required as part of the out of band setup at the edge network, if that makes sense. Does the Pi have to be dedicated? No, uh, it's a general purpose Pi. The one I'm using in this demo, I was sitting here watching YouTubes on it earlier. It has the full operating system loaded on it. The full latest, uh, I believe it's called Ras Raspberry OS now. It used to be called Raspbian, but now it's Raspberry OS. So it's a full, with the desktop GUI, everything, full operating system lo load and our, uh, the remote Pi functionality added. So no, it's a general purpose Pi. I have keyboard mouse connected to it, monitor. I can do anything with it that I would do with a normal Pi. It's just running one more piece of application code, the remote at Pi application that I, that I demonstrated. Is there any way the wireless link can work with a guest Wi-Fi that has a portal enabled? 
I'm just thinking what that means. Is there any way the wireless link will be guest? Yeah, I, as long as that guest Wi-Fi, you know, has internet service, kind of the premise of the, the demo was that either that primary internet service is down or there's a problem, but the Pi is just gonna boot and look for whatever Wi-Fi SSID you tell it to look for and provide the password you give it in the WPA supplicant file. So yeah, if there's a Wi-Fi network available that has a broadband connection, it can certainly join that and use that. The demo and the idea here of, uh, of out-of-band management with a cellular phone Wi-Fi hotspot is the idea is based on, well, maybe the primary internet isn't working at all. You could also just pre-register the remote at Pi and send it to the remote location. You don't have to physically go there. Uh, you could certainly do that as well. But you do need to have the Pi physically on site at the edge network. However you get it there is up to you. But you could also just pre-register it and ship it out as long as someone can receive it and connect an ethernet cable and power it up. Well, when the original internet connection is restored, I think the the clients on that LAN will resume their broadband connections through the, the gateway, right? Those clients do not have internet access through the cell phone or through the remote at Pi while we're in this mode. Let me go back. Let me make sure that's clear. Out of band mode is a one-way, you know, inbound path to initiate connections. These clients they do not have internet access this way, right? So if that, if that internet connection was down, these have no internet access. And the, the out of band management configuration with the cell phone and the Pi, that, that allows this remote person to get in this way. So we can receive incoming connections here, relay them to the proper client, and send any responses back out. But these clients do not get internet access by virtue of this Pi being here or this phone being here. I hope that's clear. And so when this is, whenever problem is fixed and this is back online, these guys will continue to use the internet through this path. No harm done. Can I leave the Pi there to proxy to other LAN devices still? Yes, of course. You can leave it there. And when the Wi-Fi hotspot is gone, I think I'd have to check as to whether that Pi's ethernet interface will look for the internet over the broadband gateway for the, uh, on the left there. But certainly you could leave it there. We have one more question here. So I could RDP to my Windows PC, but it still wouldn't be able to access any services not on that LAN. Yeah, that's correct. You'd get to your Windows PC and your PC would then have any access to anything else on the LAN just as it normally would, right? If your PC is on a LAN, it has access to other devices on the LAN based on the permissions and settings. Nothing changes relative to that. So if you could use your PC to get to other devices on the LAN, you'll still be able to if you establish an RDP connection. Again, I want to thank you very much for attending. I hope this was uh, helpful and clear. It's a very powerful uh, use case for Remote It. And uh, we tried to make it easy with that downloadable image, at least for Raspberry Pi, and take some of the work out of uh, configuring those Ethernet and Wi Fi interfaces. So hopefully, you'll get a chance to try this on your own. And of course, you can always email us, support at remote.it, if you have any questions. All right, well, thank you very much. I'm going to uh, wrap it up here. Thanks again.